Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report, sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers. Now I'm going to try to keep this a little quick because I really want to get to the river levels and fish counts and all that stuff, right? Because things have changed dramatically in just the last five days, which is why GPS is so awesome. This ain't no year old show. We're going to let you know what's happening uh, as it's happening, and maybe you can get out there today. Being the 2nd of September, by the way, the opening day of bow season. I just got to keep telling myself I love y'all. That's why I'm here. Uh, bow season again opens up today, and that was part of what my routine was this week. I'll be honest, I actually tweaked my back on one day, and I had to spend one day on, the, on my back, which was really just reminds you of getting old, right? Uh, but again, bow season is now. Uh, hopefully you're like me and you're you're going to have a chance to get out there this this year. Uh, I get six days, not really the best thing, hoping my buddies can line things up before I get up there. But we do have a, a week later in the year, right? Same amount of time, four weeks, but we're going to be a week later in, and that's going to be interesting. That's when I'm going to be up there. We'll talk a little bit about that going forward, but if you uh, uh, are, are going to be a little bit late getting out there, just make sure you got everything lined out. A good friend of mine was heading up there yesterday, uh, had a tranny issue with his truck. Not a Chevy. Okay, that was so cheap. I'm sorry, but I had to do it. Uh, so those are the things that you might want to get checked out, right? Head over to Les Schwab, make sure your trailer, your truck, everything's good to go. Uh, get it all looked at uh, so you don't run into some sort of issues. Uh, again, that's just a... A PSA, right? Uh, Monday, had a chance to take Andy Carson now for Andy's adventures and also help out with Good Day Oregon, uh, which, by the way, was my first time doing that. That was a ton of fun. Uh, it was very interesting on how uh, Mike and Andy uh, do that. They've been doing it a long time. But here's a photo uh, of Andy, or excuse me, I should say, okay, sorry, I screwed you all, all, all up, Ryan. We just talked about this, so that's my fault. Uh, but there's a fish that Andy did catch. We're going to show you just a quick clip here. Uh, of getting that fish landed. And for those that sent those, these clips in, uh, there was a couple of them. Uh, thank you for that. We appreciate that. It's really kind of cool to be able to see a different perspective. And I don't know if we're going to have the audio here, but once uh, Andy actually lands the fish, you can hear him from everywhere. OK, there is audio. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you can see Andy. He was so in tune. I mean, he wasn't moving. And he kept the line tight just like he's supposed to, which worked out really good. OK, so that's Andy in the background screaming and hollering. You couldn't miss that. It was uh, really cool to help him get into a fish and, and help out with Good Day Oregon. I had a ton of fun with that. And uh, for all those supporting, uh, we appreciate your support as always, right? Uh, but that was a ton of fun. and. Uh, he already brought some in, apparently, uh, yesterday, the day before. He had smoked some, and apparently it turned out excellent. So uh, congrats on that, Andy. It was a ton of fun. We'll get out and do it again. Uh, I already mentioned, if you have the ability, if you have the boat, if you have the crew, tuna fishing has just been stupid. Uh, if you get the chance to get out there, by all means, I would suggest doing so. If you've never done it before, get out there. Right? Try to find somebody. There's charter boats. There's different ways that you can do it. It is so worth it at least to have that experience to go out and go chase them. Uh, it's certainly worth it, and the fishing is very, very good. Uh, just real quickly, I uh, took my daughter out yesterday uh, to chase some doves around. We tried to do that every September 1, and as long as it's not a Saturday <laughs> or a Sunday. And I knew Thursday with that rain that came in that things were going to change quickly, and they absolutely did. The birds that at least knew were around were long gone yesterday, never saw one. Uh, but there were some folks that were hunting doves unconventionally, I, I guess I'll put it that way, uh, that did get some birds. So uh, in the end, the rain didn't help here in the northwest portion of where we spent our time, uh, but hopefully things will improve there. Um, who knows? Anyway, fish counts. Let's take a quick look at that. We talk about it every Saturday and Sunday. And yesterday, or last Sunday, in particular, I had mentioned, you know, if we don't start seeing numbers start to climb, we could very well, you know, run into some issues. We got some very interesting decision makers. So we don't want to give them any ammo, negative ammo. Well, we got good stuff going on. The numbers kind of held steady, 17, 12, then 41,005. Now, I mentioned it before the show each day, I, I do a little quick hit on YouTube. I've been doing this a long time. I look at fish counts every day. I can't remember a day that I saw 41 grand. It's been a long time. Most of the time, 
during uh, the fall Chinook season, those are the, that, the that's the run we see the biggest uh, migration over dam in a day, in the dam, over Bonneville in a day. I'm trying to go too fast, forgive me. 41, that's a big number. Take a look at the 10 year average. Uh, we'll give you a quick idea of what that's looking like. And uh, I didn't actually get those numbers in. It is far, look at this. He doesn't need, need to zoom in. So far past the 10 year average and last year's highest number. Now, most likely what's gonna happen is that number is just gonna crash, right? Which is fine, as long as it stays, you know, in those teens, 20s, going forward, we should, maybe I shouldn't even say it that way. It's possible that we could stay on the river through the 15th like we're supposed to. You never know, right? And please, some of the rumors about possible extensions, after just one day like that, I mean, we're so far ahead of yourself, don't even, don't jinx it, right? So this is all great stuff. Let's just hope that it continues. Uh, it'd be great to see these numbers hold out. Uh, some are gonna ask, well, why is that? Well, you saw just a small temperature change on the Columbia, right? Uh, not much. The last day that I was out there a couple days ago, it had come down from 70.4 to 69.1. So a little over one degree temperature change, right? Well, those fish also smell rain, different scent, and they're gonna boogie. And I mean, when these fish are going, to get 41 grand over that wall that fast, they're hauling, I mean, they're moving. There's no slowing down for him, but it's all, it's all good stuff. Hopefully we got stuff that's coming up behind him. The fishing in the main stem of the Columbia below Bonneville is fantastic already this morning, and up above Bonneville has been very, very good as well. So lots of places to go, lots of places to chase them. Uh, the one number that we didn't get up there was the silver uh, count, which is okay. I know that it also ramped up. So yeah, good stuff. It's nice to be able to talk about positive things. Let's just hope that it continues. And another positive thing is great weather coming up. It's not gonna be too hot, right? Now, hopefully we're done with these 90, 100 degree days. I mean, I don't wanna be selfish, but going forward, uh, Katie, this next week, mid 70s, upper 70s looks pretty nice. Yeah, it's a pretty nice start, I think, to September. I love the fall. I get really excited about this time of year. And I did a poll online this weekend to see what people thought. And an overwhelming majority, about 75% of you said you were ready for the fall just as much as I am. There's a few of you I know you want to hang on to summer. So for you, that is today. Today is a day where we're going to see mostly sunny skies and those temperatures in in the mid 80s. We still have a chance for thunderstorms this afternoon. So we have some wrap around and you'll see it's kind of coming up and over and that's because that low pressure center is to our southeast and so it's wrapping around. We're kind of getting the spray of it to the back. Once we get through Sunday, that's moving on and you'll start to notice now things are coming back out of the northwest as we see normally and we get to Monday and we're looking at just a few clouds. So we have a chance for some showers. Here is the potential for those thunderstorms. This is what we call Cape, convective available potential energy. That is what thunderstorms need in order to develop. And you can see it's very good through the valley and up along the Cascades. And that stays with us till just about nine o'clock as it moves on and that potential goes away once those temperatures change. The next five days, this is the total potential that we have over the next You'll see here each one individually, a slight chance again tomorrow, again on Sunday, and that's more Cascades and West Slopes, and then dry Tuesday, maybe some northern coast showers on Wednesday, and then dry on Thursday. So here are those temperatures, Owen, that you were just talking about. Mid-80s today, low to mid-70s through Wednesday, and then we have a potential to start warming up next weekend as it looks like another ridge may be building in. So I think that's pretty nice to get out there and get some hunting and fishing in. Do you think the 90 degree days are done for the year? I sure hope so. It's really hard to get that hot right now because of the sun angle, mm -hmm. because it's starting to drop down. It's when it's you know high in the sky and we get all of that heating for all of those hours. So the potential is really low. I like it. Katie, thank you very much. We appreciate it as always. All right, we're gonna cut to a quick break when we come back. Special guest in studio. Jared and Hunter Higginbotham from Yakima Bay. We're going to talk about, of course, the buy three, get one free over at Fisherman's Marine and uh, Yakima Bay. So if you want to learn how to use some of these baits better or maybe just figure out which ones you want when you head to Fisherman's, stick with us here. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P-Line because we fish by CCA Oregon. Fish focused, member driven, and by Hawk and Fish.